Hey guys, welcome back to OIC Chris, where it's never too late to have an OIC moment. Uh, if you guys are enjoying the videos, then please consider subscribing to the channel um, and putting the no notification bell on. Uh, leave a comment down in the section in the comments down below. Uh, let me know where you guys are watching these videos from. I'd be interested to see um, how far across the country I am reaching. Uh, so in this video today we're covering the maths paper 1 for the May-June papers of 2021. So this will be part 2 of this series, uh, so enjoy the video. Alright, let's have a look at your guys' favourite section of the past papers. We're looking at sequences and series. Okay, so uh, looking at question 2.1 um, from the 2021 May June uh, past paper. Question one is always going to be sequences and series. Um, so let's have a look here. They've given us the following for question 2.1. They've given us the following uh, sequence over here. Uh, they've told us it's a quadratic. Okay, so uh, we can see it's increasing. Okay, remember quadratics are either going to look like that or it's going to look something like that. Okay. Um, so we've got our differences here. If you look uh, between the first two terms is that second two terms is 20 and then between those two is 12 so you can see we have a common difference of negative 8 okay so now the first uh, question 2.1.1 says determine tn and the nth term of the quadratic se or sequence okay so we need to find tn which has the general solution I'm gonna write it down here it's going to be a n squared plus b n plus c okay so we need to find a b and c so uh, if you not too sure about how to do this I do have a video which you can go watch which explains how you get to this okay but in order to find a it's 2a equals our second common difference so 2a equals negative 8 okay which means a is going to equal negative 4 okay so immediately when we can see that a is negative 4 so it's going to be a decreasing or an upside down quadratic okay now, solving for b, we have 3a plus b equals to our first difference. So that's just 28 over here. Okay, so we have 3 times negative 4 plus b equals to 28. Okay, uh, which means if we work that out, we're going to get negative 12 plus b equals 28. So you should get b equals to 40. Okay, and now to find c, we have a plus b plus c equals to our first term. Okay, so we're going to have negative 4 plus 40 plus c is going to equal to 72. Okay, so if you work that out, you'll get c equals 36. Okay, so the t nth term is going to now filling in a, or filling it in for this year. We're going to get negative 4 n squared plus 40 n. Uh, plus 36 okay and that is our um, sequence or the quadratic term for the sequence over here okay as I said you can see it's going to be an upside down uh, parabola because it's negative 4 in front here okay now looking at 2.1.2 okay it says a term in the quadratic sequence given there 72 100 120 and 132 is equal to the 12th term of the sequence of the first difference okay determine the position of the term in the quadratic sequence okay so what they're saying is if we have the sequence 72 100 120 and 132 they're saying that there is a term in here somewhere which is equal to the 12th term of our second difference okay so our second difference sequence was this over here uh, which is 12 so if we continue down the 12th term over here so the 12th over here is going to equal to some term up here in my quadratic um, sequence okay so let's have a look here for the second difference we can see it's an arithmetic sequence um, it just has a common difference of negative 8 okay so we know for arithmetic sequences uh, I'm just going to call this for the second difference let's call it SN Okay, that's going to be a1 plus n minus 1 times my difference. Okay, so we know that a1 is 28. Okay, because now we're just looking at the second difference over here. So 28 plus n minus 1 and my common difference is negative 8. So the sequence we're then going to get is going to be the following. 36 minus 8n. Okay, so this is just to represent my second difference sequence. Okay, 
Now, we need to find for what is the value of the 12th um, spot for the sequence. All we do is we look for S12, that's 36 minus 8 times 12. Okay, if you plug that into your calculator, you're going to get a term of 60. Uh, let me just check, minus 60, sorry. Okay, now we got to find the term in the set in the first sequence, our quadratic sequence, which is equal to 60. Okay, so how do we do that? S, I mean, Tn is now going to equal to negative 60, and we've already got the term that we got in the first question. So we're going to have negative 60 equals to negative 4n squared plus 40n plus 36. Okay, so if we sort all of this out and you sort out the algebra, you're going to get down to the following. You're going to get n squared, uh, sorry, not plus, minus 10n minus 24 equals to 0. Okay, so if you factorize that, you're going to get n uh, minus 12 and you're going to get n plus 2 equals 0. Okay, so therefore, n equals to 12. It can't equal to negative 2 because we don't have negative 2 um, terms in the sequence. Okay, we're not going backwards. Okay, we're not moving this way. We're moving forward. Okay, so for n equals to 12 in the quadratic sequence will equal the same as the 12th term in the first difference. Okay, now let's have a look at 2.1.3. Okay. It says determine the maximum value of the quadratic sequence. Okay, so the quadratic sequence was given by this here. Okay, it was given by t n equals negative four n squared plus forty n plus thirty six. Okay, now we need to find the maximum value. So there's two ways you can go about doing this. Okay, um, you can either use because it's a parabola, we can find the turning point, which is negative b over two a. Okay, and then once we have this value, we substitute it back into here, and it will give us our um, maximum point. So if we do it this way quickly, it's going to be negative 40 over 2, negative 4. Okay, which means uh, negative 40 divided by negative 8 is going to give you 5. Okay, so now we substitute that back in, which means we're then going to have t of 5 is going to equal to negative 4, 5 squared plus 40 times 5 plus 36. If you plug that into your calculator, you're going to get a value of 136. Okay. If you want to try it and practice your differential uh, or your differential differentiability, sorry about that, or your calculus, you can take the derivative of this, set it equal to zero, and then find the value of n and then substitute it back in here. So we can take t prime which is then going to be negative 8n plus 40, okay, equal to 0. We solve this for n, which means n is going to equal to 5. Now we substitute this back up into here, and you'll also get a value of tn equal to 136, and that's the maximum value. Okay, now let's have a look at 2.1.4. It says determine the maximum value of the following sequence, and then they've given it, okay, so I've written it out of here. So let's have a look. We can see that this is a quadratic sequence. Why? Let's just run through it quickly. So the difference between there is 28. Uh, then we have 20. And then we have 12, which means we have a common difference of negative 8 and negative 8. Okay. So let's see. If I minus 8 again, I'm going to then get up here. Uh, 12 minus 8 is going to give me 4. Uh, 37 plus 4 is going to give me 41. Okay, if I do minus 8 again, I'm going to get negative 4. Uh, if I add minus 4 onto that over there, I'm then going to have 41 plus minus 4, which is then going to give you, let's have a look there, 37. So you can see that we're now decreasing again. So we increased over here, and now we, so we increased to a point, and now we're decreasing. So the highest point that we have is then going to be 41. Okay, so that's just by inspection. Lastly, if we look at 2.2.2, they've given us the following sequence there, negative 11, 2 sine 3x, and then 15. And they ask us to determine the value of x for the interval 0 to 90 degrees, uh, for which the sequence will be arithmetic. Okay, so I've written everything out over here. So for it to be arithmetic, okay, we need to have a first common difference. 
okay, which means our first common difference is where a2 minus a1 equals our first common difference, but that's the same as saying a3 minus a2 or a4 minus a2. Okay, so what we can do is we can take the first difference, we can check that here. So we must see that a2 minus a1 must equal a3 minus a2. So we're going to have 2 sine of 3x minus minus 11 must equal to 15 minus 2 sine of 3x. Okay, so if we sort all of this out, we're going to end up with 4 sine of 3x. Okay, why well, I take that over, I add them together and I take this, that side, that is going to equal to 4. So we need to find where sine of 3x equals to 1. Okay, divide both sides by 4. Now, how do we sort this out? We can see that by timesing x inside the bracket by 3, we've squashed, okay, our sine function. So our original sine function would look something like this between 0 and 360, okay, but now because we've multiplied, multiplied it by 3, I need to get 3 complete sine waves to in the span of 360, okay. Plus we also know that sine of x which equals to 1, that is when x equals to 90 degrees. Okay, so therefore, what we're looking for is where sine, now we need to solve, solve for sine 3x equals to 1, so that's going to be where 3x equals 90 degrees, so therefore x equals 30 degrees, and we can see that 30 degrees is still in my range of 0 to 90. Okay, and that's how we go about doing this question. If you guys did enjoy today's video then please do consider subscribing to the channel please uh, leave a like on the video leave some comments down in the comment section down below if you have any questions or queries regarding the uh, paper that i've just covered uh, i'd love to hear from you guys and remember it's never too late to have an oic moment